third division, defeat a four division titleist in Adrian Broner and pick up a fourth weight division of his own. And now he's going into a title unification fight. As for Robert Easter, he is the longest reigning title holder at 135 and probably the most challenging, the most avoided fighter at 135. So I've got to give kudos and recognition to both of these fighters because no one's rushing to fight Mikey Garcia. No one's rushing to fight Robert Easter. And yet this was an easy fight to make because both of them were anxious to do it. It's not just a top heavy card. We've got the return of Luis Ortiz, one of the top 10 heavyweights in the world. Uh, we've got an exciting super lightweight bout with Mario Barrios and Jose Roman. And uh, on top of that, we will be streaming uh, on the Showtime Facebook and YouTube accounts starting at 5 p.m. Eastern, excuse me, 5 p.m. Pacific. Uh, we will have the Fabian uh, Maidana fight as well as the Carlos Valderas fight. And that is streaming again on the Showtime social media pages. Those of you who have been watching Showtime know that we've been televising the undercard fights on Extreme and streaming for literally years. Uh, we're happy to see other networks getting on board. Um, it's a great idea, it's great for the fans, it's great for the sport, and we urge all of you to tune in starting 5 p.m. on our social media, and then 7 p.m. Pacific on Showtime. Thanks. Um, I don't think that Mikey Garcia is one of the top five pound for pound. I think he is the top pound for pound. And I think that makes it that more, that more exciting, because I can tell you Robert Easter knows that he will be ready. He will be ready. He trained for that. He's been dreaming about that fight. That's the fight he wanted. And when we announced it a couple of months ago at Staples Center, that is exactly what he told me. He said, Richard, I have no idea how long I waited for this fight. And finally, it's here. You're going to see the very, very best, Robert Easter. And I think Team Garcia knows that. Mikey knows that. But Mikey always finds a way to solve the toughest puzzles and looks out for the toughest challenges. And that's what makes a fighter pound for pound the best, when he makes great fighters look ordinary. But on Saturday night, watch and see. Watch and see. Mikey better be ready, because I know Robert Easter is. It's a pleasure now for me to introduce to you Brian Custer, who will be asking the fighters uh, some of your toughest tests yet of your career. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I know for sure this is my toughest fight. I mean, um, I'm very happy to have this this huge step up. This is, you know, this is gonna be one of those breakout performances. You know, I've been looking forward to. I mean, um, I want to thank Roman, you know, for taking this for taking this fight. You know, I know he's coming with a lot to prove. And I mean, it's all my, you know, I'm carrying you know, my city of San Antonio, Texas. It's on my back. I mean, uh, I love fighting here in, in LA. I always give, you know, a lot of love every time I come here. And um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward to a very exciting fight. And what does it mean to you to be fighting at Staples Center for the first time? Oh man, this this opportunity, like I said, it's huge. I mean, especially to be fighting at the Staples Center. You know, this that's this is where all of the greats, you know, have fought. And I mean, for me to be fighting here now, you know, it's it's all. I mean, it, it's definitely a dream come true. You know, but it still feels surreal. Jose, you're fighting big girls. Do for your career. Well, Mar Mario Barras is a talented young boxer. You know, uh, a win over him will open a lot of doors for me. Um, you know, I want to thank Showtime, PVC, and Ringstar for giving me this opportunity. You know, and uh, the people are going to the people are going to love this fight because you guys are, for the most part, the same height. What should we expect Saturday night? You're going to expect uh, a war between two Mexican fighters. <laughs> We move to the co-feature. Both looking to establish themselves in the heavyweight division here in boxing. Luis Ortiz, King Kong, and Razvan Krijanu. And Razvan, we'll start with you because you're coming off a year layoff. The Ortiz team believes you've got some issues when it comes to fighting lefties. Will any of that be a factor Saturday night? Hello everyone, I want to thank, first of all, I'm sorry for your uh, question, but let me thank to all these beautiful people who came here. I want to thank to the promoter, I want to thank to Showtime for this huge opportunity for me. And special, I want 
thank to my team journey my management and my actual real team who work with me who set me ready for this fight now let's get back to to your question uh, you asked me if uh, a salpa can put me problem. You talk about uh, probably the fight against Donovan Dennis, right? Uh, for that fight, uh, if you remember, I was fighting in a tournament. And in the first fight, I was cut above my uh, right eye. I had, after the fight, I had one month to train. I didn't was heal properly to can spar. I had zero sparring for that fight, and I think that was a uh, that was the main thing, the problem for the fight against Dano Andres. But now I am really ready. This uh, when we got this call for this fight, I was already in shape, and we had to just make the adjustment for uh, for the salpa. We brought the sparring partners, and we had three full weeks full of fun. I am ready for Saturday night. Thank you. Deontay Wilder fight that Luis Ortiz had that you said, you know what? I can capitalize on that and become victorious as well. Yeah, that was a great fight. First of all, I want to congratulate Ortiz for that fight. That was an amazing performance. And yeah, I saw plenty of stuff. Special, the main thing with, uh, is working with Ortiz is the, the sharp one too. Luis? This will be your first fight since that loss to Deontay Wilder. Do you believe a victory puts you right back in line for a world title shot again and a rematch with Deontay Wilder? Luis, it's your first fight since the defeat with Deontay. Do you think that a victory on the Sunday puts you again with the number one of the best in the division of heavyweight? Well, uh, uh... Eh, bueno, buenas tardes. Sería, eh, sería grandioso una revancha eh, con mi Walder. Yo vine a hacer lo mejor que sé hacer en el ring, que es lo único que sé hacer. Yo no sé hacer poner un cuadro, no sé hacer nada, lo único que sé hacer es tirar piñazo. Y vengo a hacer lo mejor que hago. Sí, sería una gran oportunidad y, y, y sí la deseo. La deseo con el alma. Eh, ante, de que me pararan la pelea, hubieran querido que me sacaran en camilla. Y me hubieran arrancado la cabeza antes de que me hubiesen parado la pelea. He says, thank you very much for everyone here, and, and he's happy to be here. Uh, without a doubt, 100% a victory on Saturday uh, will put him back in line. He doesn't feel that he should you know, be bumped anywhere but in the top five uh, as a heavyweight. The only thing he knows how to do is fight, and that's what he's coming to do Saturday night. Uh, you know, dedicated to his craft. As far as the Wilder fight, he feels that he would have preferred that he left on a stretcher or, or been brutally knocked out. As, uh, you know, some people are saying that it happened. He obviously wasn't. It was a TKO stoppage on, you know, just he couldn't go any further, but he would have preferred it the other way because he's a fighter and, and that's what he wants. And uh, he's happy to be here. He thanks everyone and uh, looking forward for Saturday night. Luan believes that he saw some things that you were vulnerable, and he looks to exploit those on Saturday. What should we expect from King Kong then on Saturday? Luis, tu oponente piensa que él ve algo en ti eh, para el sábado para poder eh, tener una ventaja. ¿Usted qué piensa de eso y qué esperan de ti para el sábado en la pelea? Ah, eh, eh, me quieren quitar la comida. Y, y te puedo repetir que lo único que yo sé hacer es tirar piñazos. Y cuando hay alguien hambriento frente a uno y hay un solo plato de comida, hay que, hay que bajarse. Y, ya, says, y eso lo voy a hacer el sábado. He says that that's what he believes and that's, you know, on him. But at, at, in, his, uh, in his frame of mind, there's, there's only one plate of food on the table. And Razvan's coming to take it. And when there's two hungry guys, the hungry guy is going to eat. So we'll see Saturday night. Then we get to our main event. At Showtime Championship Boxing, we are all about the best fighting the best in unification fights, big fights. It was a fight that Robert Easter Jr. wanted this fight. Part of our triple header. And the, when you talk about the lightweight division, unification is rare. This will be the only the 10th fight, unification fight, in the history of the lightweight division. 
first one came in 1941. The last unification fight at lightweight was nearly a decade ago, nine years ago. The last time Showtime Championship brought boxing brought you a unification lightweight fight 13 years ago, 2005, and it was one of the greatest fights ever. When you had Diego Corrales stop Jose Luis Castillo in the 10th round. If this fight is anything like that, it should be one hell of a night, Saturday night at Staples. So let's start with the trainers. Robert, you've been trainer of the year like 500 gazillion times, right? Trainer of his brother. How much of a risk is Mikey taking by fighting Robert, who has such the height and reach advantage? Look, there's always risk in any fight. But uh, we're, we're very well prepared. Mikey's mentally ready for a big challenge. And, uh, you know, there's always risk. You know, there's risk. This guy's very tall. You know, he's, uh, I'm sure he's going to try to use his reach and, uh, and try to find him the outside. But we're ready for whatever he brings. Robert Easter Jr., the IBF lightweight champion. He's got a tag team. When you talk about trainers, his father, Robert Easter Sr., and then he has Kevin Cunningham. And we know the stable that he now trains with Kevin. Devin Alexander, Erickson Lubin, Javante Davis, and on and on and on. So this is the first fight that you guys have had together. Robert, first time you spent the entire time in Florida, away from Toledo, Ohio. In fact, Robert Easter, the only world champion ever from Toledo, Ohio. Uh, Kevin, what fundamentally did you have to change with Robert once he joined Camp Cunningham in Florida? Well, from a fundamental standpoint, um, there wasn't any major changes. I mean, uh, Robert's always been a, a tremendous fighter. Uh, he's an excellent boxer when he wants to box. Uh, basically, we just you know, put extra emphasis on how we want to fight Mikey Garcia. And, uh, you know, I think he has the natural uh, skill and ability. And like you said, he's six feet tall, lightweight, long reach. And, uh, you know, we are prepared to, to dictate the tempo, control distance range, and, and, and everything that we really want to do. He's done it the last 10 weeks in camp. And I think he's going to do it on Saturday night. Robert, but when you guys are talking about taking fights, did Robert Easter Jr.'s past two performances make you guys more inclined to take this unification fight? First of all, you didn't mention my stable. Oh, man, we, we, we'd be here all day. Your stable's long. <laughs> Look, uh, I didn't even see those last two performances. We're ready for the best robbery, so, you know, mostly everybody thinks he lost against Fortuna, you know, uh, so that's not the fight that interests me to watch. I want to see the best robbery out there. You know, there's very few fights out there where I could see, you know, really see the best out of him, but, you know, we're ready. We're ready. Kevin, you were quoted as saying, Mikey, overlooking being disrespectful to Robert by not talking about him to the media and talking about other fighters and other fights. Expound on that. Well, I mean, it's obvious that, you know, basically, you know, for the last, last couple of weeks, you know, they're talking more about Earl Spence and Lomachenko than as opposed to talking about this fight on Saturday night with Robert Easter Jr. So I look at that as disrespect and overlooking and but I think they're, they're I mean he's got a seasoned trainer he and, and Mikey's a pro so I mean I don't think they are totally overlooking him but I think it's totally disrespectful to talk about all these fights next when you haven't dealt with Robert Easter Jr. yet. Let's talk to the fighter. What does uh 
unification victory over Robert Easter Jr. do for your legacy? And would you consider it a signature victory on your record? Well, this is the first time I'll have a title unification match. It does mean a lot. Facing another undefeated champion in the same weight class, you know, it will definitely help my legacy and help my career. I feel that this is the best option, the best fight for me right now. <laughs> I'm taking the steps, the proper steps to move forward and like I always say, cement my name, cement my career for, for the ages. And there isn't another fight in front of me that does that other than the Robert Easter fight. Right now in my career, I'm all about taking the biggest fight, the biggest challenge, and that's why I'm taking this. I feel that Robert Easter is a tough, undefeated champion who is coming with everything he has. This is also his biggest fight. So him bringing the best out of him will only allow me to bring the best out of me. And, and that's why I really you know, asked for this fight. That's why I wanted this. We were looking at options, but nothing else interested me or nothing else excited me enough like this fight. Robert, you know, it's interesting just talking with some of the people here and you talk about it to a number of people about this fight and just about everyone keeps picking Mikey Garcia. Does that upset you? Does that motivate you? Um. It is what it is, you know, uh, fans, you know, they have their favorites, you know, you either gonna pick one guy or the other, you know, so, uh, we did what we had to do in training camp to prepare for this fight and, uh, July 28th, you will see. Have you? Um, no, not exactly. I, I really don't pay attention to all you know, the overlooking, uh, uh, he say, she say. Uh, July 28th, we still gotta get in the ring. You know, we still gotta get in there and, and throw these hands. So all the, uh, the, the, the talk, that, that doesn't bother me. Mikey, when you champions like yourself, champions like Robert, you got Lomachenko there. Do you believe the winner of this fight best lightweight in the world? I think a lot of that is up to opinions and I don't like, just like Robert says, he doesn't really pay much attention to what one says versus someone else. I don't really look at what the media might put down as best in the division or on any list, but overall, we're the only two undefeated champions in the division. So the winner should be considered the best, whether some agree or not that's their opinion but in my eyes this winner will determine the best in the division we're the only two undefeated champions Robert in a article you, uh, you were quoted as saying listen Mikey Garcia in my opinion has been overrated who's really the big name he's beaten you really believe that of course the only big name he has beaten is Adrian Bronner you know, everybody knows that, you know. Like I said, champion versus champion, this is gonna determine, you know, who is the better fighter out the weight class. Like you said, we're the only two undefeated fighters in this weight class. What do you think a win over Mikey Garcia does for your career, your legacy that you're trying to build? Um, it's gonna add, you know, big attention. You know, uh, it does a lot for my career, you know, put me in a recognition, you know, where I'm supposed to be. Um, like I said, uh, this fight right here is a big fight, but I look at all my fights like a big fight. But this is, you know, unification bout, champion versus champion, undefeated versus undefeated, two warriors. You know, July 28th, you will see, you know, a lot of fireworks and uh, excitement. My really when it boils down to it, see yourself fighting at welterweight, considering, I think you said at 140, you're at a disadvantage because those guys are big. So why, why could you see yourself fighting at welterweight next, and especially someone like Errol Spence, who is probably one of the bigger, powerful welterweights? 
I'm telling you, I, I'm here to take the biggest fight, the biggest challenges, and that's why I'm willing to move up to welterweight. I'm very serious when I say that I will be at welterweight very soon. I really look forward to taking on someone like Errol Spence for that reason. Because, because everybody says, don't do it. It's the biggest threat, the biggest challenge. I'm way out of my league trying to go there. Well, that's what actually excites me and motivates me the most. I want to prove everybody the kind of fighter that I am. And I, I haven't had those opportunities yet. I've been fighting, you know, champions and undefeated champions, but it seems like I'm always the favorite. It seems like my accomplishments uh, don't get enough credit sometimes because, well, you're supposed to win. You're supposed to beat that guy. But a fight with Errol Spence is a whole different league, and that's why I, I'm really interested in, in getting that fight. We'll wrap it up with this. Same question to both of you. First time for you fighting here in seven years. Back home, what should we expect Saturday night? Este sábado va a ser una gran noche de boxeo, gran pelea. Estaré peleando aquí por primera vez en siete años. Que es bonito regresar aquí a casa, sentir el apoyo de mi todo mi público, todo aquel que no ha podido ir a mirarme a, a mis otras peleas en otros estados. Ahora sí pueden venir y disfrutar aquí en vivo, aquí en Los Ángeles. Estoy muy contento, muy agradecido de que mi oponente aceptó venir aquí a Los Ángeles. Una gran pelea, en realidad dos campeones, dos invictos, vamos a pelear. No, no puedo estar más contento. Yo les garantizo que voy a dar todo de mí para salir con la victoria y salir triunfador el sábado por la noche. Well, I'm very happy to be here. It's been seven years since I last fought here and to be able to come back and give my local fans and people who support me an opportunity to see me live you know and not just a fight but a world title unification match you know here at Staples Center it's just a great thing I'm very happy and thankful that Robert accepted the fight here in LA I know other opponents would say no I'm very happy to be able to give the fans this type of fight here at Staples you know, now I'm coming back as a world champion and now I get to unify the titles here in front of my home crowd, hometown. You know, I'm just, there's nothing better that I, you know, that I could ask for. This is it and I'm ready to do everything it takes to win. And I guarantee everybody I'm going to do everything in my part to come out victorious and unify the champion on Saturday night. And Robert, we'll end it with this special to you too. Last time I looked, you made your professional debut in L.A at Staples. Now you have the opportunity to unify. What should we expect Saturday? Oh yeah, it's been a long time. Uh, like I said before, you will get a lot of action, a lot of excitement July 28th. And uh, just expect the unexpected. <laughs> before we face off the fighters, we're gonna take... A question for Robert. When you hear Mikey here talking about Errol Spence, what do you what are your thoughts? Uh, he's a fighter, you know, the fights that he wants, you know, you can't tell him what he doesn't want, you know what I'm saying? Them the future fights that he wants. Uh, Keith Eide from BoxingScene.com. I was wondering if Mikey and Robert could both answer what they remember from the Corrales Castillo fight, you know, one of the best fights in boxing history. Well, I remember watching it, and you know the the ending was the most dramatic. You know, I was watching. I, I was a lot younger, and I thought Castillo had that. You know, after dropping Corrales, and that that was the the victory right there. And you know, if you blinked, you would have missed it. You know, Corrales stops Castillo. You know, and it was just. I think the biggest, you know, moment, the biggest, the most dramatic moment in boxing for that, for that time, and up until now, you know, it's, it's still one of the top. Robert, could you answer that as well? Who's Robert? <laughs> <laughs> Me, Easter. Um, Chico, being one of my uh, favorite fighters, you know, um, you know, he was always a tough warrior. You know, sort of like myself, you know, gave up his height, you know, to uh, <laughs> go in there and battle. But uh, after being dropped, you know, he, you know, he comes back even stronger and finished fights. And uh, then you've seen he finished the fight and the ref stopped it and he was victorious. 
just pro teams contacted Showtime after that fight because coaches wanted to show that ending and that fight to their teams to talk to, to, to those guys and motivate them about perseverance and how you can come back from off the mat. That just shows you the impact that that fight had. Guys, we appreciate it. It's time to face off the fight. Release some production holes, so there's a very small number of $50 tickets which just went on sale. Uh, make sure you get your tickets. Uh, we expect to sell out a huge crowd here at, at Staples Center. I'll see you all tomorrow at the weigh-in, which we moved inside uh, the concourse of the Staples Center, since it's a bit hot, bit hot to do a weigh-in outdoors. So I'll see you tomorrow, and I'll certainly see you Saturday night. Thank you. We're going to face the fighters now.